Hello there, my fellow Space Transylvanians, and welcome back to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapters lore. Today we shall continue with a chapter I actually covered last time, but I really enjoy talking about them, so part 2 on them arrives today. They are the Impalers, a brutal Blood Angel successor that would make even the Night Lords proud. This time we're gonna learn about their homeworld, organization, ranks and recruitment. I'm your host, the Transylvania narrator for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Nosgoth is the grim and forlorn planet of the Impalers chapter. It also somehow got transported to 40k from Legacy of Cain. Located in the northwestern reaches of the Segmentum Obscurus, bordering on the mysterious Halo Stars, the isolated and lonely planet is located far away from nearby Imperial sectors. The main continent lays in the northern hemisphere and is extremely mountainous and inhospitable. Massive, silent pine forests climb the steep mountainsides as far as the eye could see, between the dark crags and rocky outcroppings of the Forbidden Peaks. Some of the deep valleys are never even touched by the sunlight due to the dense canopy of the green forests and the cloying dense fog forming around the mountains due to the planet's pervasive weather patterns. These are not deserted places, however, for once the sun sets, the giant bats, the apex predators of Nosgoth, fill the air with their high-pitched screaming and they hunt lesser prey stalking the forest floor. During the short and gloomy daylight period, wandering tribes of feral humans make their living beneath the pine branches. They hunt, they forage, and they war with each other. The native Nosgothians worship a heinous deity they call Chernobog, also known as he whom devours the souls of men. According to local legend, this god of death gains his followers by swallowing their souls. Believing that the human body was the vessel in which the soul resides, the Nosgothians mimic their god through ritual sacrifice and endocannibalistic rituals eating the flesh of their loved ones. This is actually an expression of the veneration of the dead, or the pursuit of consuming some esoteric aspect of the person, like the deceased wisdom or knowledge. In that way, their deceased loved ones could live on forever. Following a battle, the Nosgothians also practice cannibalism by consuming the flesh of their fallen foes. They believe that this gruesome practice transfers the strength and secrets of the victims to the victors. When the Impalers first came to Nosgoth and discovered the local population, they quickly realized that Chernobog, or the Great Soul Leader, was in fact the Emperor of Man, although worshipped in a very barbaric form. It was a simple matter for the chapter's wardens, or chaplains, to convert the Nosgothians to the worship of the God Emperor proper. Moreover, many of the rituals and beliefs of the Nosgothians corresponded well enough with the beliefs of the Impalers and the natives, therefore, adapted quickly to the rule of their new masters. Following the chapter's settlement upon Nosgoth, the chapter knew that their blood dependency issue was still a reality. If not given fresh blood, the Astartes would eventually fall into a deep catatonic state and wither away until they finally died as shriveled husks or they would succumb to the curse of the Black Rage. Despite the best efforts of their Magos Biologist creators, they were unsuccessful in staving off the legacy of the Impaler's progenitors, the Blood Angels. After a few decades, it became obvious that the Impalers were still afflicted by the twin curses which plagued all the signs of Sanguinius. At the beginning, the chapter's apothecars, or apothecaries, found a temporary solution to stave off the blood first, which afflicted their every waking moment. This was done by growing blood artificially via the use of specific blood servitors. Unfortunately, this was only a stopgap measure, as the amounts of blood they produced were insufficient to the needs of the chapter. Also, the living devices still required fresh blood of their own to fuel the process, something the chapter was entirely lacking in. After the discovery and reclamation of Nosgov, the Impalers finally found a means to sustain themselves indefinitely. As soon as they began controlling the population, they designed a tithe system that would ensure fresh supplies of both neophytes and, more importantly, a source of precious vitae. 
Unfortunately for them, from that point on, the Nosgothians have lived in a nightmare. They understood all too well the reasons behind the dark actions of their masters. On their world, eating the flesh and blood on such a dynamic scale meant having immense ritual power. And since these blood-clad angels of death were actual emissaries of the great soul eater, the natives didn't oppose the tyranny of the impalers to any real extent. The chapter and the natives thus live in a strange and brutal symbiosis. The Astartes control their lives, but still protect them from any outside harm, for the Nosgothians are the human livestock of the Impalers and the chapter's future. With this constant supply of blood and potential neophytes, the Impalers have evolved into a strong chapter and a force to be reckoned with indeed. Just like the Blood Angels, the Impalers are more or less Codex compliant, organizing themselves in accordance to the tenets of the Codex as much as their genetic flaws allow. However, the Impalers prefer to utilize unique terms and ranks which reflect the culture of their homeworld, rather than the standard terminology in the Codex. The chapter thus possesses ten standard coterays, or companies, each one being led by a hospodar, or captain, who is protected by elite Strigos veteran squads, serving as the honor guard. The only exceptions to the standard Codex structure is the Hellsong, or Sanguinary Guard equivalent, and the Lemures, or Death Company. A coterie possesses a hundred Astartes organized into ten broods, or squads. For logistical reasons, each squad is assumed to have a nominal strength of ten Virelings, or Battle Brothers, although battlefield attrition and instability brought on by the flaw inevitably reduces this tally. Following Gilliman's more recent revisions to the Codex and the reorganization of the reserve companies in the Era Indomitus, Ten additional squad members and icons were introduced to the chapter, which now allows more than a hundred brothers in a company under certain conditions. In addition, each coterie or strike force will also have a number of lemures within the ranks, although this is considered to be an auxiliary force. The strength of the company can vary greatly depending on the onset of the Black Rage, and therefore it doesn't have an official fighting strength. The first coterie is composed entirely of the chapter's Trigos veteran squads, warriors with experience forged in countless battles via the decades or even centuries, who would wage war across the width and breadth of the galaxy. Many of the stalwart warriors are trained in the use of the sacred and very rare suits of Terminator armor. The second through fifth coteries are the main battle coteries, and they carry the weight of the chapter's combat duty. The 6th through 9th coteries serve as the reserve ones, and they are composed of squads of the same type who often act as support for the battle coteries, as well as providing replacements for the casualties suffered by them. The 6th and 7th coteries are composed entirely of battle line squads, both first-born tactical marines and primaris intercessors. The 8th coterie is made up of various close support specialists, including first-born assault marines, Primaris Assault Intercessors, Inceptors, Incursors, and Reaver Squads. The 9th Coterie has a full complement of Fire Support Specialists, including Firstborn Devastators, Primaris Aggressors, Hellblasters, Vanguard Eliminators, and Vanguard Suppressors. Finally, the 10th Coterie is composed of the chapter's legacy, Firstborn Scout Marines and so-called Broodlings, or Neophytes who haven't yet earned their place as full battle brothers in the chapter. With the introduction of the Primaris Marines in their ranks, the Coteries also possess several squads of extra Primaris Reavers, Vanguard Infiltrators, and Eliminators. Some unique ranks of these fellows include… Fun fact, almost all of these are actual medieval Romanian royal court ranks. The Grand Voivod is the chapter master equivalent. The Hospodar is the Captain Equivalent. The Spafarioi is the Master of the Keep. The Vornik is the Master of the Watch. The Armash is the Master of the Arsenal. The Maestro de Flota is the Fleet Master. The Dregator is the Master of the Marches. The Alaichaush is the Master of the Rites. The Kelar is the Master of Logistics. The Jalat is the Lord Executioner. The Vistier is the Master of Relics and the Starosta is the Master of Recruits. 
Also some unique line ranks include Spatar for the veteran, Drakan for the veteran sergeant, Patrician for the sergeant, the Vireling or Blooded for the Battle Brother equivalent, the Juvenat for the Scout Marine equivalent, the Broodling or Unblooded for the Neophyte, and the Thrall for the Aspirate equivalent. Every six months or so, the bloodthirsty rulers of Nosgoth send emissaries to the tribes in order to take on Thralls or Aspirants from the terrified and helpless natives. Known as the Blood Tithe, the chapter wardens or chaplains oversee the process of calling the weak from the strong in a set of duels, often to the death. This type of duel varies, as sometimes primitive weapons such as flint-tipped spears or sharpened serrated fangs of wild animals are also used. Sometimes none of this happens at all, and all the adolescents are forced to fight to the death in hand-to-hand. -hand. The combatants are expected to pommel, gouge, throttle, bite and tear each other bloody using nothing but their hands and teeth. Those who fail these initial rites of selection are usually killed outright during these brutal, no-holds-barred affairs. The few that do manage to survive the trials, but are still deemed unworthy as potential aspirants, are instead marked for a darker fate, ritual sacrifice. However, the remaining aspirants who manage to emerge bloody but triumphant at the end are taken to undergo even more arduous trials in order to become an initiate of the chapter. Even those that are crippled in body or mortally wounded during these deadly contests, and are still deemed worthy by the officiating warden, are taken back to the fortress monastery to be rebuilt by the apothecaries. Led to awaiting transport, the adolescents leave behind their lives forever. Once accepted, the adolescent recruits become known as broodlings and they will undergo further processing and evaluation to ensure their worthiness and to undergo the arduous transformation into a transhuman. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Impalers chapter, their ranks, organization, homeworld, etc. for today. I am actually very much enjoying the lore of these fellows, and they will definitely make at least one more appearance in the near future. And I don't want you to think I'm biased. In fact, I am pretty much averse to most Romanian things anyway. But these guys, the author managed to make an interesting vampire slash Transylvanian theme chapter without making it sound too silly. And if nothing else, I wanted to narrate to you about their specialist squads next. Anyway, that's enough from me. What are your thoughts on the Impalers? Do you think they're a cool chapter? Do share your thoughts on them in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching, and the Emperor protects.